Have you been wanting to hold more pencils in your pencil holder, but you just keep having this issue? Let me just put my pencils away. Oh man, only two of them fit. Well, you're in luck, because today I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. That was a really weird intro. Oh, what's going on guys? And welcome back to the channel. So, I'm gonna show you how to make a pencil holder. And only a pencil holder. So with pencil holders just disappearing off of shelves, we just can't put many pencils in there because look at that blockage. We only have half the space to be able to put our pencils in there. Look at that, it only held one. But with this one, we can hold far more pencils. So the first thing that we have to do to be able to get these into fully functioning pencil holders like that guy right there is get rid of this little weird motor on this side of it and get rid of these flaps. So first, let's throw it in this bench vise right here and start going to town on this thing. So with our pencil holder in the vise, the first thing we need to do is get off this motor held on by two 10 millimeter screws. Just pull both of these guys off. Now with that motor off, you can see inside of here, the flaps move up and down with this white cog exposed. Next thing we need to do is drill out that center pin right there to be able to remove that assembly on that white cog. So let's just throw this guy back in here in the good old vise. The head of that guy drilled off. We should be able to just pop this off now, but I'm gonna drill it out just a little bit more. Look at that. whole. Th Whole assembly just came off there. So with that guy drilled out, now we can get a flat head and just pop all of this right off of there. Just boop. And come on, come on, boop. Coming out. There it is, there's our white cog. We can get this nice spring guy off of there as well as that. Go. Now we're just left with that. Nice little sight. It's not gonna take this guy out of here. So with the end of this drilled off, we now have access to be able to start pulling out all these flappy doos in here. Now, before we just go yeeting stuff out of this, we need to get those screws out. Nine out of 10 times, those screws are gonna strip. So I'm just gonna drill them out, make life a little bit easier. Once the screws are drilled out, we can slide the little flaps right there up and out of here. And then we can focus on getting the rod that slides all the way through these out. Let's drill out some screws. You know what, actually, I'll see if they try to unscrew out. I highly doubt they will, but we'll give it a whirl. Let's throw you back in our vise right here. All right, now with all of those guys on there, and go ahead and remove this rear cover back here. So now that we've got both of those kind of moved out the way, we should be able to come in here, grab, you know what, I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers. Grab a pair of pliers, and these flapper dues should come out with a little bit of force. One, two, three, go. Ah. Look at that, there's one flapper do. Don't need you. One, two, three, go. Two flapper do. Now, the fun part when you get to use a hammer. So I'm going to grab a punch and a hammer and start to tap this bar out of here. Now what should happen is after you break it free, you should be able to grab it from this back side and just slide it right out. You should be able to grab it from the other side and yeet it right out of there. So now we've got our rod out of there and we've got our flapper dues out of there. So after drilling out the screws in the flapper do and knocking the flapper do out of here, we now have somewhat more open pencil holders, which is good. We're getting there, we're making progress. So this is the rod that comes out. Now those little screws that used to be right there that held the little flaps in place on this thing will always strip out on you nine times out of 10. So you may just have to drill them out, it's no big deal. I used a 3 16 drill bit, got it out of there, no problem. Now comes the fun part of getting out these like little fins. So you can see on this one how it has that little fin in there versus that side how it no longer has the fin. So we need to get that fin out. The easiest way that I found to do it is with one of these little Dremel tools and a standard Dremel to be able to smooth it out when we're done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm just gonna try my best to get as much off as I can with just this. Then we'll follow up on that. So starting point looks exactly like that right now. Let's take our doodad, cut as much of that as we can. All right, now let's flip it over 180 degrees. My neighbors have to love me. Flip it upside down, do the same thing. Make some cuts, 
going straight down that guy to start getting that center plate out of there. Out of there! All right, so I've got a whole bunch of small little cuts in here going up and down this little plate in the middle. Now I'm not trying to cut all the way through it because I can't, my tool won't let me. So what I'm gonna do here, now that I've weakened the casting right there, is take one of these punches and just start tapping on it with a sledgehammer. After I tighten the vise down more. Now what this is gonna do is gonna start breaking it up. And see like all these little teeth in there are starting to fall out now, which is good. It's what we want. There we go. That's looking great. Pretty happy with that. So this is currently what we have now. So you can see we went from that and that was from making those initial cuts and then coming in behind it with the punch and cleaning it up. So now we, we still got to clean up the side walls, but look at how much, look at how many more pencils will fit in there now. We're not going to be fighting with pencil power. We're going to be able to fit so mini pencils through here, especially after we smooth it out because everybody knows that modeling flow with pencils, the smoother the surface, the more pencil power you'll get. So this is coming along nicely. This has taken me about, I'd say 15 minutes so far to clear out those little butterfly guys and get that center plate out of there. Now let's start smoothing this thing out. So now that we're ready to smooth them out, the best thing that I found to use is a Dremel with one of these small grinding stones. The grinding stones last a decent amount of time and they're able to clear up a good amount of that before they die out. I tried using little sanding discs. Uh, they really didn't last that long. This is aluminum, so it's a pretty soft metal, easy to work with, but let's get a grinding stone in there and start smoothing this out. Let's get those little guys out of there. Wipe up all this dust in here. Ooh, that's looking good. It's a good looking pencil holder. Oh no, we gotta we gotta flip this guy upside down. That's what I'm doing. I'm like, what am I doing? Get that guy out of there. Let's get him out of there. So now you can see we've gotten all of the tangs off of the walls inside of our pencil holder. Now with all the tangs off of here, the next thing that we're gonna do is go in there and start smoothing it out a little bit. After, like, after you get it to the point, like, yeah, I can kind of feel a lip there, but it's not the end of the world. If you really wanna go ham, you can go ahead and make your pencil holder a little bit wider if you want to. Yeah, you can put some more pencils in there maybe. So the best tool that I found to use for these are these small sanding stones right here. They've got, fun different shapes, sizes, you name it. They come in like a standard Dremel kit, I guess you could call it. I got some more in there. So I'm gonna run through here the inside of this with the water in there, uh, just to help as a little bit of lubrication to, uh, to start smoothing this out. Dude, the smell coming off of this thing is horrendous. Like it's actually bad. It's not an appetizing smell by any means. It's like, it's like Applebee's on a Tuesday night after they've closed and like they threw out all the old like onion rings. That's what this smell reminds me of. Not a good smell by any means. Safety glasses, where I put you. So I'm gonna come in here with a Scotch-Brite wheel just to clean it up a little bit. We're making good progress, but we are not done yet. So we have got the butterfly valve out, we've got the divider wall out, and we've got the walls of the pencil holder cleaned up. Next thing I'm gonna do is come in here with some metal polish to get it even nicer. But hey, for what? how much did I spend in materials on this, $12? That's a nice pencil holder right there. So I'm just gonna come in here put a little bit of metal polish on my finger and then just wipe it around the inside walls of this. Then we're gonna go through with the Dremel and see just how good looking we can get these. Not gonna lie, for $12, that came out great. Like the inside polished up so nicely 
There's no more restrictions for our pencil holder. If you really wanna go crazy, you can remove that little lip in there too that the butterfly valve used to sit on that blocked most of our pencils. But we went from that with the flapper do in there, that grossness, to this gorgeous looking beautiful pencil holder. Do you know how many more pencils we're gonna be able to flow through there at high RPM? Yo, so many pencils. Now, we are not quite done yet. On the back side right there where we pulled off that black motor and on the other side, we need to be able to seal those up. Now there's a couple ways you can do that. On this first set right here, I went ahead and I tapped and I helicoiled just that hole right there so that way we could thread it and keep it closed. Now you can either do that, use a helicoil, um, or you can have somebody go in there and weld that shut. Now that is a bearing right there. If you wanna get that out, you can just get a punch and knock that thing right out. Now on this other side where we have that smaller hole, we have this small plate that we pulled off of it. So let me throw that back on. If you really want, actually I would highly advise it, throw a little bit of like gasket maker on there, pop that guy right back on, screw it on, and then you only really gotta worry about sealing one side up. So let's get that small plate back on right there. Where did I put it? I can move all this. Where did I just put that? Oh, it's right there. And get this small plate back on here. We just pop that cover on. We put one screw in right there. We put the other screw in right there. We can tighten those down now. All right, screwdriver didn't, didn't really want you that bad anyways. I wanted to use this one anyways. So you know what? Just hang out down there on the floor. So we've got our plate back on on that side. Now, if you really don't wanna have anybody weld these up or you don't wanna helicoil it or tap it, what you can do is take that motor that you pulled off, make sure that you put the gasket back in there and push it, push it down all nice. Line it back up in its home. Grab those two 10 millimeters that we took out the, at the beginning. Thread that top one back in. Let me thread this bottom one back in. And now you've got a sealed up pencil holder that holds a lot more pencils. So there you guys go. If you're having difficulty finding a pencil holder for your Subaru, look no further because you can make them yourselves for relatively cheap, assuming you have a Dremel uh, laying around your garage. If not, you can buy a Dremel. I'll link all the stuff you guys need down below to be able to do this at home. Like I said, we don't know how much longer pencil holders will still be around. So if you need a pencil holder, you can totally make your own. Not too hard to do. So if you guys like the video, if the video helped you, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, silver, purple, cyan, whatever color it turns for you. And we got some good stuff coming up for the 05 STI. I got some powder coat in. Uh, I got some rebuild kits on the way. All of this is gonna be happening on the 05 STI. Uh, I think we're having another fabrication day Friday, so the day you guys are seeing this, I think I'll be down at Fuse Fabrication. We're gonna be working on the EG33 six swapped STI again. So make sure you subscribe if you want to check that stuff out, you know. I will, oh, color of the day. Did I say color of the day? It's silver if I didn't. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.